Hi, and thank you so much. I'm so happy you joined me. If you're one of my students, uh, you had to join me. And for the rest of you, I thank you for voluntarily joining me as we learn about two-step metric conversions. Now, uh, you know it's enough to memorize um, a prefix to base, but if you consider, uh, you know, that's like, I don't remember how many it was, 10, 12, more depending on your teacher, conversions, just to go from prefix to base. If you consider, if we had to memorize now all of the prefix to prefix, now we're getting into, you know, like 10 factorial conversion factors. I don't know. That's math that was long ago in my life. But way too many for my brain to want to grasp. Um, I do not let my students, personally, I do not let them shift decimal places. Do math, show math. You must, if you are my student, you must show me this in dimensional analysis. You cannot use proportionalities because I'm after process. If you are my student, you must show me every step. You cannot go directly prefix to prefix. So you notice here, I went prefix to base, milli to the base unit joule, then I went from the base unit joule to kilojoules. Okay, so when you do this, you want to set it up. If millijoules are in the numerator, you need to put them in the denominator. Joules are in the numerator, you need to put joule in the denominator. That's how we ended up with our final answer in kilojoules. And that's what we're doing here. We want milli to kilo. Okay, now what I will allow you to do, I think it's helpful to write down those conversion factors. My students, I would let them do question mark kilojoules are equal to 367 millijoules. What I would be okay with is if you mapped it out and said, okay, I've got to go from millijoules to joules and joules to kilojoules. These are some problem solving tools for you. All right. Now, once you get in here, Find your prefix. Let me clean that up a little bit. So find your prefix. If you've memorized it the way I taught in prior videos, that's where your one goes. Find your prefix. That's where your one goes. Find that lonely base unit. And that, remember your lonely base unit, is where your scientific notation will go scientific notation by your lonely base unit. Okay, so let's see how we apply that in a couple of conversion factors. So I'm going kilograms to milli, kiloliters to milliliters. So that means that I need to go through my base unit because I have prefix going to prefix. So I know that's going to be two steps. So I'm going to go from kiloliters to liters and then liters to milliliters. Now, you can do it a parentheses way or you can, I'm trying to get a straighter line. There we go, there's the line. You can use the kind of, people call this often the railroad way. I know it's two steps. Prefix to prefix is always two steps. So I've got 5.43 kiloliters. This is not a double unit like five miles per hour is a double unit. This is not a double unit. So if you want to color that out or put the number one there, feel free. Okay, I, I want to get rid of kiloliters and get to liters kilos in my numerator, so I'm going to put kiloliters in the denominator, so I know they'll cancel, and I'll put liters in the numerator. Notice I'm going to handle my units before I worry about numbers. That can help you set it up. Now I want to get rid of liters, so now I want to get rid of liters, so I'm going to put liters in the denominator, so they cancel, and I want milliliters. So now I know I have my units set up. Now what I want to do is find my prefixes, because once you find your prefixes, 
that's where the number one goes. By the lonely base unit, that's where I'm going to put my scientific notation equivalents. So I'd be 1 times 10 to the third for kilo and 1 times 10 to the minus 3 liters. There's just a tiny part of a liter in every milliliter. Okay, work out your answer to the correct number of significant figures and I get 5.43 times 10 to the sixth milliliters. Okay, so let's try that again. Micrograms to centigrams, prefix to prefix, is always going to be two steps. Okay, it's lagging behind me a little bit. 6.99 times 10 to the eighth. So to write a microgram, and be really careful, I can't tell you, the biggest mistake students make is between milli and micro. All right, micro, you can write the letter U, so draw the letter U, and then put a tail on the front, and that's how you can write microgram. All right, so this is a microgram. I want to go through my base unit, because I just haven't memorized that many prefixes. I want to eliminate micrograms and go to grams. Then I want to eliminate grams put them crisscrossed or opposite numerator to denominator to centigrams. Then I'm going to find my prefix and that's where my one goes. Now I'm going to put my scientific notation. Remember, micros to the minus six, millis to the minus third. So one times 10 for centi, it's minus two. Just be careful. That's a really common error that I get there, is I, you know, find a way to, you know, come up with a link between the word micro and the number minus six, okay? So that's what you want to really get tight in your mind, and I think that will help you. Okay, if we do that math to the correct sig figs, you always want to check my work. I get 6.99 centigrams. All right, we have one more of these just to make sure you're processing with me, okay, and making sure we use lots of different units as possible. So again, you can use the parentheses. Um, a lot of people, once they get started, really like this little railroad approach, okay? So you write your given will always be over here. If it's not a double unit, it's a single unit, it's not a you know, per unit, um, calories per hour of exercise, for example. You don't want anything in the denominator there. Don't be tempted to put something in that denominator there if it's not, uh, if it's a singular unit. Okay, I need to get to centimeters, so I have to go from nanometers to meters, meters to centimeters. So crisscross, so they cancel numerator to denominator, and then meters. Then I want to get rid of meters and go to centimeters, crisscross, so they cancel. Okay, nanometers will cancel nanometers if one's in the numerator and the other's in the denominator. Meters will cancel meters if one's in the numerator and one's in the denominator. Okay, now find your prefix. That's where the number one goes. And then nano is one times 10 to the minus ninth, nano, nano, nine. Centi is one times 10 to the minus two. Now this method works if you learn it that way. If you've learned 100 centimeters equals one meter, I will accept that, but the problem is you tend to get confused with where the number one goes and you put the scientific notation in the wrong place. So I recommend that you rememorize them my way because the main reason is it helps you make sure you put the number one in the right place. Okay, thanks for joining me. You know this is a lot. Good luck as you apply this to chemistry or physics in your future.